get in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Gentlemen, happy Vikings preseason game one day. Are we ready for a nine o'clock kickoff tonight? Um, we're, I'm ready for at least a quarter. And then I might be like starting to fall asleep. The game might get boring. Yeah. Yep, exactly right. You know, get those energy drinks ready. Get those surly before I die is ready. Yep. Uh, by the way, coffee. we are ha- we're having some technical things today. We're just our technical setups are our our head of technical Judd Zilget, quite frankly, is not pulling his weight around here. Drop so. the ball. I have dropped the ball. I'd like to apologize to everybody involved for my lack of technical. Like I I you know what I am? I, I'm the Ed Donatello of this show. I told you guys, because you're, you're you're like can you do technical? I'm like, absolutely, I can do. Oh, man, I know Vic Fangio. I'm all over technical. I know my guys at Finch Home Solutions. Are you kidding? Technical? And then I got all it hell breaks right. loose. And I'm a- I'm absolutely just yeah. like, go back to cover two. Do whatever you, we, we used to do back in the day. I'll blame Judd, but as the executive producer, I think the commenters on YouTube will probably blame me as a scapegoat with my job title being executive producer. And one guy's laptop doesn't work. One guy's microphone doesn't work. The other input works, but it doesn't work. So uh, I might be the actual scapegoat, according to the fans of our show. I think considering that we've, for a large chunk of the last three years, have done this show from different states, from di- like hotel rooms, different parts, like press boxes yeah. that we've, uh, we've, largely been pretty good but that, that's why my mic sounds different today so we're gonna we're gonna grind through this judd's mic just cuts out randomly so we're we're also <laughs> probably using stuff that we used three years ago that we're in the process of replacing so hang with us here we appreciate you guys this show is presented and we're, this is going to be a little bit of a preview of sort of what's to come in the preseason games uh so it's that version of judd's camp notes today but a shout out to our friends at tcl which has award-winning tvs for any budget any space all with stunning picture quality and tcl makes more than just tvs they offer mobile products audio devices and home appliances tcl brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology learn more at tcl.com uh, i'm gonna be watching on a tcl tv tonight very excited for the first vikings preseason game a shout out to real quick to a loyal purple daily listener and viewer Will Marshall, who has adopted officially today his daughter, Giovanna. A shout out to him. A big day for Will. So uh, congratulations to you and Giovanna. Yes. Awesome. Applause for for our our guy, Will. Congratulations. You guys enjoy watching your first Vikings game together tonight. So, all right, Judd, where do you want to take us here on this sort of preseason preview journey through your camp notes? So uh, Dex had an idea, and I like it, which was let's do Thank a you. most to prove. Let's do a most to prove. So instead of just like position, because we, we've talked a lot about position battles, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think if we uh, dress this up in the most to prove context, because we know that the starters, for the most part, if they play, which I don't think that they're going to, but if they do play, it's going to be very, very brief. But there is a lot to prove. Like there is a lot to watch. Um, and so let's just start with a place where we've been talking about a lot of late because of the emergence of linebacker Ivan Pace Jr., a UDFA from Cincinnati. Um, he's been tracking really well. I think that clearly the coaching staff is pleased with Pace because he's been getting first team reps, but let's spin this into most to prove. If he can play, and this is a big if, and this is interesting, as Doogie reported on, on the scoop that we recorded earlier uh, today, Brian Asamoa, who has been assumed uh, the assumed starter and who started training camp, taking all the first team reps, did not practice on Tuesday, dinged up. It's not considered, I don't think, anything serious. But nonetheless, this is going to give Ivan Pace an even bigger platform probably to perform and show what he can do. And so if Asamoah doesn't play, I think the question becomes, and I, Pace does play, and I fully assume he will and play as well, what is going to be the situation? Like, does Pace pull e- even more a- ahead? Does Asamoah try to play because he's like, oh, my goodness, my job is, if not in jeopardy, it's a, there's a little bit of trouble here. So Has anyone ever demanded into, like, take away, like, starting quarterbacks who want to get some reps? Yeah. Has a sort of a fringe starter ever demanded to play a preseason game because they're worried that the the less experienced backup guy might take their job. But that could be unprecedented if Brian Asamoah says, no, 
No, you put my ass. You put I want to play. Ass in that I want to play. Yeah. Well, you know I what? I want to play. You you said the exact word correctly. Fringe. Fringe is the key word. I mean, pre being banged up, um, it looks like he was losing ground to pace, right? So like, there's a lot to prove here, and I I think we're past the point. I do expect that Asimo is going to start, but I think we're past the point of assumptions of it's his job locked down. So. Between the two of them, I think Pace and Asamoah, there's a lot to prove here and that there is at least now probably a legitimate position battle that I don't know we forecasted before the Vikings reported to training camp. It sounds to me like you're saying Ivan is pacing ahead for a roster spot. Oh, oh boy. Can your mic cut out or can mine again now? <laughs> oh, I'm sure one of them will before the hold, end of this episode. Wait, hold on a second. I'm going to mute myself and start... There you go. All right. So who else has something to prove here? Let's keep rolling through this. Let's okay. See. Let's go through one uh, that I think is is very intriguing and has probably become more intriguing because of what we have not seen. Again, I don't think the starters play. I don't think Alexander Madison gets near the field tonight. But that backup running back spot has become a hodgepodge of the unknown now. And we all fully expected, again, when training camp started, Dalvin Cook gone. We all expected that, yes, Madison is atop the depth chart, but this is no longer a Dalvin Cook and, hey, Madison can play and nobody else plays for the most part, right? That this would be more of a rotational situation, that this would become at least intriguing. You know, Ty Chandler might get some playing time and Wong Wu might get some playing time. The fact is nobody behind Alexander Madison has done anything to grab this job. And these guys are going to play behind Madison in tonight's game. And this is going to be the first opportunity, really, I think, for someone to distance themselves at least a bit. Um, Wang Wu has not practiced in a week plus, I think. So I don't expect him to play. So I, I think that the snaps will go Ty Chandler will start. Seventh round pick Dwayne McBride will get some playing time. And coming from the rear, but having a chance here to impress former D.C. defender, the leading rusher in the XFL this past spring, Abram Smith. But, you know, for all we've talked about, it's going to be a rotation and guys are going to, to play. And, Phil, you, you've been out to practice a couple times, too. Nobody has grabbed that job or even come mm -hmm. close. Wang Wu is listed second on the depth chart, which didn't surprise me, other than the fact he hasn't practiced. I think that the backup running back spot is going to be incredibly interesting because there's a chance right now that Madison is going to open the season taking way more snaps than we expected if nobody else can basically say hold on a second here I can get substantial playing time too so maybe it's yeah maybe it's not the running back by committee that uh that we all thought based yeah. on nothing less about Alex Madison being the you know the the bell cow that, but you know what? If you're Alex Madison, you've done this before too. You've had stretches where you've had to be a sort of a bell cow for a month because Dalvin Cook's out. So mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think he's stepping into the shoes and just filling, you know, the peak version of Dalvin Cook that we saw for all those years. But if he needs to be a bell cow for a month while they figure out, you know, catching another one up to speed or signing somebody else, you know, it's not the end of the world. I don't think you have to go in needing one of these other guys no. to carry the ball, you know, ten times a game and play. 30 snaps or whatever. It, it just flies in the face of, I think, what we expected. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think we, we expected, hey, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, two or three guys playing more now. And at this point, I honestly, unless something changes, and it might drastically in the next few weeks, I wouldn't feel super comfortable putting, like, Ty Chandler there. And I don't know, you know, I, I think we talked about this earlier in the week, but his pass protection skills don't look up to speed. McBride, we've talked about, has a problem with fumbling, and he's a seventh-round pick. If you expect him to be great in pass pro, that's probably a big ask, too. So it just yeah. sort of shifts what the thought process was going to be, not to say that M Madison's going to become Dalvin Cook, but I don't know that there's a guy that the offensive staff, and O'Connell in particular, would be comfortable utilizing consistently, and tonight sort of gives them a chance to to assert themselves as, hey, at least I believe, at least I belong, especially in Chandler's case, second on the depth chart. 
You know, you yeah. all laughed at uh, Dex tweets last month and write that down when I said Ty Chandler wouldn't make the Vikings 53-man roster. And I'm sure he's not uh, 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 for sure locked to be in or out, but I will say his stock has 100% fallen or taken a step back since training camp has started. As RB2 is. that fair to say? It's taken it hasn't a step gone back. up. It hasn't it's gone up, for sure. Step back is fair. Step back is fair. I, I, I would be shocked if he didn't make the roster. But yes, I expected, I thought that when camp started, it would be Madison, some combination of Wang Wu and Chandler, but that those guys would look more prepared. And in both cases, one because of injury with Wang Wu and one because of probably deficiencies. Yes, Declan, you are, you deserve a pat on the back, sports son. Are you now rooting to be right? Are you rooting against Ty Chandler? Are you rooting for him to fumble so that you can be right now? Uh, yeah, 100%. Because I want the touchdown too. <laughs> I, I, I don't, not just my own pride at place. This is not just my own pride that's at place. And I know this is another man's livelihood, but uh, no, my pride, there's write that down, touchdowns in play here. Yes, I'm rooting for myself to be right, like always. It doesn't, doesn't really make you a good person right there to uh, root for fine. the downfall of a guy, a young man trying to make his way in the National Football League. This is this is when ego, ego mm -hmm. takes over uh, your fandom, I guess. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, from one competition, back up running back to another competition, defensive back, and in particular, the cornerback spot. So I don't think Byron Murphy Jr. plays. Like, I, I don't think that there's yeah. a need. He was injured last year. You certainly don't want to tempt the injury gods. But after that, I'm very curious. Um, I think a Caleb Evans is probably safe to say has locked up a starting spot. But he's only going into his second year. So I'm, I'm not going to be shocked if he gets a few series tonight. But as far as the prove it, thing goes okay here's one for you and i'm assuming he plays was banged up but is back at practice now andrew booth jr prove it like dude you've been second team since the off-season workout started you're a second round pick um he that's a big and again i don't think his roster spot's in jeopardy but as far as the expectation is you know prove it so, so like my guess is a caleb evans might play uh, Makai Blackman, who is who is proving it as we speak. I mean, he is, as Phil has seen, gone way up the depth chart in training camp. So, mm -hmm. yes, yes, he needs to prove it, but I think he's in pretty good stead there, right? Um, Joan Williams started in the nickel with the first team, is now in the second team. But I think that's also a sign of what Blackman has done. So I would say that the one guy who needs to be challenged, Booth, he is a guy who so far because of Injury especially, but probably playing time as, as well. Um, definitely has not achieved what this coaching staff thought. So if there's a prove it tonight in the defensive backfield, a corner, it is Andrew Booth Jr. Yeah. Where are you at sort of, you know, we've, we've talked about how there's different ways to spin this cornerback room. There's the, hey, young, athletic, upside, look at all these options. And then there's... Well, barely any of them have actually played meaningful NFL defensive snaps, so it could also be a train wreck. So that it's a really wide range, wide variance of what this cornerback room could be. After watching the first two weeks of camp and listening to just the buzz around training camp of Brian Flores and Kevin O'Connell, where do you fall on that scale? Are you more, oh my God, the lack of experience is a problem, or, oh, there's some really interesting options here, and they actually do have more bodies than you know, than maybe you would have thought a couple months back. In fairness, I can probably give you a better answer after the joint practices when, when I see okay. them actually go, go up against more competition. So far from what I've, I have seen, um, I think that Evans looks like, and he is, of course, is a fourth round pick from 2022. Evans looks good. He looks the part. Now he had three concussions. That's a huge concern. I don't think his performance, and I'm not saying he's going to be a shutdown guy. He's not. But I think his performance has been pretty damn good. Uh, Blackman is emerging. He's a rookie, so it, that's where I'd like to see him like in joint practices because it sort of scares me because we, we have certainly yeah. got excited about uh, rookie corners in camp before. But Booth is the one guy who who is bordering on being a disappointment. Um, much like Another guy who I'm guessing is going to start tonight, and again, big prove it guy, Lewis C at safety. Mm -hmm. Another big, you know, I mean, those are your top two picks, right, from the 22 draft. And right now that draft is perceived, I think, still as being tracking towards a bust of a draft. 
Uh, those are two guys who I want to see a ton from, even if they don't win starting jobs, and they probably won't. I think they're going to have an opportunity here to really prove that they have taken significant steps uh, in their play. Uh, I've been looking at the Score North memories page on this day a lot lately. Here's one from August 10th, 2010 from Tom Pelissero. Oh Vikings just put a depth chart out for the first time in camp. Interesting. Asher Allen, not Lito Shepard, is listed as the first team right cornerback. How about those for some name drops? Lito Asher Shepard. I don't remember Phil- Lito. Philadelphia Eagle, the Childress, because he tried That's to pick up right. every Eagle that came down the pike. Uh, Hank Basket. Um, oh my who, God. Who is the? Who is? Oh, oh yeah. Pinkston. Uh, oh, Todd, Todd Pinkston. Pinkston, right? Yeah. Alligator yeah. Arms galore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wasn't McNabb. he a high pit? Wasn't Todd Pinkston like a? Yeah. Was he like a first or second round pick? Or no, I might be wrong. I'm, I'm, now I have to look. He might have been. He might have been. He I mean, he was another guy that. Before they um, got T.O., the Eagles had like no legitimate wide receivers. They were He was throwing to slappies for the most part. Dude, Todd Pinkston was the 36th overall pick. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, they're right. Dude, the Eagles had a hodgepodge in the early 2000s. Do, do you guys recall Billy McMullen? Oh, no. yeah. The know. wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Ever, I'm telling you, everything hey, that came down the pike from Philadelphia. <laughs> The Hank Vikings Basket was on that uh, Kendra reality Wilkinson show. Yes. reality show at one point. More famous wow. for that than a, being a football player. Yep. Amazing. Hey, uh, before we get to some more who has something to prove names here going into training camp, you know what? Maybe you have something to prove to your neighbors by upgrading your deck thanks to UglyDeck.com. Look at this problem right here. And then look at this. And by, <laughs> and by the way, that's a duck suit, not a chicken suit. We got it wrong the, the first time, but damn it, we're going to get it right. But you know what? You can invite the neighbors and throw a party because a maintenance-free deck, while it can be expensive, but what if I told you there is a way to save $10,000, even if you don't think that you can build a deck yourself? Sports dad like uglydeck.com is the DIY assist program where ugly deck and look at that right there installs your footings uh, designs and assist with, with your project and you finish the deck and save thousands you get a free DIY coach who's going to help you from start to finish half of the uglydeck.com DIY customers you guys have never framed a deck before in their lives but you can DIY it with their help average savings between 10 and eleven thousand dollars if you go to their website you can pick out your deck and check out all the great national brands they carry right now they are in the midst of their fall promo with five hundred dollars off all you have to do is tell them that sports dad judd sent you or that you heard about it right here on purple daily Late summer and fall, perfect time to build a deck. So get started now on their website. Go to uglydeck.com and click on DIY. Also, EcoFun has a fun little uh, soiree coming up this Saturday. The EcoFun location in Burnsville, which is celebrating one year since opening. From 11 to 3 o'clock on Saturday, they have special in-store pricing on all ATVs, scooters, and dirt bikes. By the way, I saw a video of a guy driving an ATV on a freeway That is illegal, okay? So we're just here to say, if you do get one of these ATVs, be responsible and don't drive it on the freeway, folks. EcoFun Motorsports in Burnsville and in Forest Lake off 35 North and 35W uh, South, the Burnsville location. EcoFunMotorsports.com. Tell them that we sent you in if you do go in for one of those electric bikes, ATVs, or golf carts. All right, let's continue here. Who else has something to prove? You know what? This might surprise you a little bit, but I actually think Nick Mullins might. Um, Because of the Flores defense, which obviously what the Vikings are going to see tonight from the Seahawks will be far more vanilla, as we like to say. And because of that, I think Nick Mullins, who's had what I would consider to be a very up and down camp, um, he has something to prove. Now, he's played before in games, obviously in regular season games, so I don't think there's a huge concern there. But he hasn't looked great. And O'Connell is a quarterback whisperer. He is a QB Mm -hmm. guy. So he knows exactly what he is looking at. And while Jaron Hall has something to prove, just to be very clear, I don't think there's like massive expectations. Like, I don't think O'Connell's like, oh, my God, what if Kirk and Nick go down and we had to play? So I think Jaron Hall is probably going to be told, hey, relax, do the best that you possibly can. We just want to see progress. With Mullins, you want to see the ability, I think, coming out of training camp of a guy who can step in and play. Because, you know, knock on wood, Kirk Cousins, one of his great attributes is he does not get hurt. But you can't count on that every single year. 
So I actually think that I'm guessing Nick Mullins will start. I don't think Kirk will play a series. But anyway, my guess is he gets most of, if not the entire first half. And I think he has something to prove just as far as, hey, you know what? In this offensive system that Kevin O'Connell runs, if something does happen to Kirk, I can take over and give us a chance to win. It might not be pretty, but I think that that's going to be an incredibly important one, in my opinion, to get to Kevin mm-hmm. O'Connell and what he probably wants to see from his quarterback. Yeah. I mean, you kind of, you know, we've touched on this, but like, I don't think it matters how you perform as a backup quarterback behind Kirk Cousins. I mean, Sean Mannion was one of the worst backup quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. And because he was an assistant coach for Kirk and a safety blanket for Kirk and a confidant and all these things. So it really depends on what are they looking for. But at the same time, they would have to go outside the organization to find someone better than Mullins because he's not going to get beat out by Jaron Hall. I don't think in the next few weeks. Right. So no, could no, they find, no I mean, if he, but I, I feel like you kind of know, regardless of preseason performance, you kind of know what you're getting in Nick Mullins. He's been in the league long enough. He started a bunch of games. You know, if he kind of train wrecks in the preseason, I don't think it prevents me from, you know, keeping him on the team and having him be, because Kirk loves having him in the room. So we know what he is. Right. Kirk loves having him in the room. So, Sean yeah. got himself cut though. I like he was so bad that he got himself after cut. several years though. And yeah, technically yeah, that was a different coaching staff. But, but O'Connell's yeah. not messing around here. And and the the one thing that Mullins has the potential to prove here too is he's had very he's had a very small sample size of being allowed to run this particular system. So I'm not saying he's going to be cut if he does not play well. I'm just saying I think it's going to give everyone more of a peace of mind if he looks competent. He doesn't have to look great. But there have been some practices where it's been pretty doggone rough. And and look, Kirk's had some uh, struggles too. So this is not just a Nick Mullins thing. But um, it's worth watching. And, you know, the first half again I think is going to be mostly, if not all, Mullins, my guess is the second half is going to be Hall. And just be prepared. That that might be rough. Jaron Hall might Jaron Hall might be rough, but I don't think that that's a, oh, my God, he's he has to be cut. He's not, you know, that one's going to be allowed to play out a lot more, in my opinion. Now, Jaron Hall could also decide, you know what, I'm not going to stand in here and try and figure out what's I happening in the pocket. I'm going to I'm going to roll out. Maybe they call some stuff for him that, yeah, you know, he can use run. his legs, get out. If he can get outside the tackle box and create some space, he could actually make some plays. I could see him being kind of a, like Kyle Sloter struggled in practice, but then when it was game time against vanilla third string defenses, I could actually see that being the case for Jaron Hall starting tonight. Jaron Hall runs tonight. Here's my guess: sixty yards. Oh, that's okay. He, in practices, he does. He just takes off. And look, he's you know he does. Yeah, he gets flushed out. And I would rather see him at this point in his uh, life in his career. I would rather see him m- run then stay in the pocket because there was a pass that he threw in the Tuesday night practice. And again, this was in shorts. Um, he threw a pra- he threw a ball in the practice that sailed uh, over the receiver's head by a substantial amount because he essentially gets happy feet and he doesn't plant his feet. So I would rather see yeah. him use his footwork to run at this point than to try to make dumb passes. So I bet he runs for about, 60 yards. The issue is, I don't think that's what the Vikings want to see. I don't think they'll be upset about it, but I I do think that they eventually want to see, can he operate as a quarterback? This was exactly the problem he had in college too. Clean pocket, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. Pressure, muddy pocket, happy feet. So if you were struggling with that in college, and we detailed all this stuff when he was drafted, that's why he wasn't first or second round pick. That's why he was, you know, a fifth round pick. If you had struggles with that in college, imagine what it's like in the NFL when you're, it doesn't mean you can't overcome it, but it just like the tsunami of speed processing information. Yeah. So, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. It's always fun to watch new young Vikings quarterbacks to see what they, what they look like. And then call for them to start. Yes. The minute, Jared Hall plays the well. minute that Kirk Cousins, <laughs> you got to think about, I mean, you got to think about starting don't right. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's who get, else? Who else yeah. needs to prove things? Uh, let's continue on the defensive side of the ball. Let's go to the um, outside linebackers, a.k.a. pass rush specialists. Daniel Hunter ain't playing. Marcus mm. Davenport, I don't think, plays. I can't guarantee he doesn't, uh, depending on where the coaching staff thinks he is. But 
Um, the one that I, I want to point to in particular, I think, because in my opinion, he's in a pretty crucial year now because he's not young. He's not old yet, but it's Patrick Jones the second. Patrick Jones the second, if you watch him in practice, just from a physical standpoint, six foot four, 264, okay? And I, I think Phil will back me up on this. Just totally looks the part. Like from a physical st- he just Sickly looks. he does. Yes. Yeah. And I think this is a pretty crucial year. This is definitely a year where he should say, you know what? Davenport is on a one-year make good contract. And if he makes good, he's going to get paid. Daniil is now on a one-year contract. And there is a fighting chance that both guys could be gone, right? Or at least one of them's gone. This is my job to win now, like for next year. Like this is when when I get, this is the year that I get in that rotation consistently, but I really start to flash. And so going into training camp 2024, I am in a position to replace one of those two. Um, so I, I think the prove it would definitely apply. And I'm not saying he's been a disappointment, but I, but I do think that there has been something that the coaching staffs, two coaching staffs now have seen in practice that don't always translate to games. So I think that there's a big prove it there because again, when you look at him, that doesn't look like a fluke of a uh, man. He's a little guy. I know he's a very big guy. He looks, he, you know, he looks physically enough like a, a guy like Hunter where you do expect a lot. So a definite yeah. prove it is Patrick Jones. The second is he, I think the question is, is he a Jag? You know, is he just a guy that he's, you, you need guys like that on your team. And as a backup who plays a few snaps here and there, or, Maybe 25 snaps a game. Awesome. He might get you a couple pressures. Or is there another level there, like you're saying, that with the right defensive system and now another year in the league, could he be a guy that starts and gets 70 pressures in a season, right, over the course of, you know, 16, 17 games? Mm -hmm. And right now, I would probably lean – he's certainly not a guy that you're going to cut, I don't think, but I don't know that he's a guy that's in danger of – if you if you're looking for a real dude at edge rusher, I don't think he's close to being a starter unless he takes major steps here. So but yeah, like when you just look at him, he looks like a machine. He looks like Daniel Hunter in some ways, in terms yeah. of like physique and muscle build and everything. Yeah. So I, I am curious to see him as well. I got two more for you. Mm-hmm. The depth wide receiver competition is on. So Jordan Addison, according to O'Connell, is going to play. I guess he'd play a series. Like, I don't know how much he's going to play. But he's going to to play. And obviously, unless something changes from a physical standpoint from now until uh, September 10th, uh, Justin Jefferson, who won't play, K.J. Osborne, who I'm guessing won't play, Addison have this team made. So those three roster spots are not in question. But the guy who's been absolutely flashing at times and standing out Brandon Powell. Now, what makes this interesting is, as I predicted, Phil, when we did our when we did my uh, last 53 cutdown a couple days ago on PD, I said Brandon Powell is going to make this team, and in my opinion, Jalen Rager will not. Brandon Powell can return punts, potentially kicks, and just flat out, I think he's a more reliable receiver as far as being at the right place at the right time. So, I think this game gives Brandon Powell, who I'm guessing is going to start a chance Mm -hmm. uh, to to prove even more that he belongs. And it gives Rager a chance to respond. And keep in mind, if I'm not mistaken, Jalen Rager is guaranteed $2.4 million no matter what. So, like, the Vikings probably aren't itching to cut him, but I do think that at this point he is an odd man out. Uh, But this, this this game could be a chance for Rager to say, I ran some wrong routes last year. But I was brought in like, you know, I wasn't up to speed. I don't know, some BS. But I had a whole offseason to study the playbook. So I do think that these games and the joint practices are going to be extremely important from a prove-it standpoint to Jalen Rager if he wants to hold on to a job at least past the point when Jalen Naylor returns because he's still out. He has not practiced since the first practice of training camp. I do not expect him to play. Uh, But I think number five, Jalen Rager, is a big-time prove-it guy right now. Okay. I mean, just to put this into context, if Jalen Rager, who was a top 20, was he like the 20th pick, 21st pick, top 20-ish overall pick? Pick before before Jefferson, right? Mm -hmm. So yep, he was – and, you know, the Vikings, they didn't just, like, pluck him for nothing. Like, they gave up some draft capital to get him, right? 
if that dude can't go out and slay in a preseason game. And I know that you're playing with some backups on your team too, but if he can't go out there, get some separation, run some routes, and catch about six passes for 90 yards in a preseason game against backups, then what are we doing here? Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. So it is, it is, it's kind of prove that you can do something on offense. I need more than just like being Poke able to the stick, the nervously meme. catch a punt while you bobble it. Like run <laughs> a route against the backup cornerback is what I want to see here. Oh. All right. The final thing, the final um, on the spot, the heat is on, the pressure is mounting. It's time to prove it. Declan Goss' favorite position, the kicking position, okay? And, and we touched on this briefly on Wednesday's show. Greg Joseph, it sounds like, is going to be is going to start kicking. I don't know what the kickoff r- rotation will be, and quite frankly, I, I don't know that that's important. But the field goals and extra points, obviously, are incredibly important. And Greg Joseph sounds like he's going to get the first crack at that tonight when, if and when Jack Podlesny gets a chance. Now, th- they could they could have Joseph take the first half, Podlesny the second. They could have Joseph take this entire game, Podlesny the second game. Who knows? But this is incredibly intriguing, again, based on what we've talked about before, which is last year when training camp started, there was a – punting competition and mm-hmm. i for sure mocked it i think that we all sort of mocked it and in the end ryan wright emerged and won that job so i'm not dismissing pod lesney especially if he shows a big leg 50 plus yard field goals consistently and of course extra points i'm not th- dismissing the georgia kid as having a chance to win th- this job. But long yeah. story short, I think this is worth keeping an eye on, and I think it's going to be intriguing. And I don't think that this is just a favor or a camp leg. We're going to bring Jack Podlesny in. I think this is an actual competition. Now, Joseph might win it, but it's worth monitoring. And it's the right move. It's the right move. So let's see these guys in practice. You know, I, I, it's 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 tough. Like, there are some fans there and stuff, but this is an actual game scenario, so... This is probably where they're going to be judged. Like, I think the stuff that happens in the preseason games for these kickers weighs a little heavier than the stuff that happens in practice because, you know, it's more of a a real simulation, if you will. So, yes, there's list. Hey, hit us up in the YouTube comment section, too, if you have other names that we should be keeping an eye on closely or if you have names of people that you want Judd to throw in his camp notes here in the just coming go days. watch. I'll just go watch them the whole practice. That's what it is. Bombard Ham. Judd with who he should be focused on, fixated on here. CJ Ham's not playing, right? He doesn't like so. Games. No. He's too much of a veteran now. Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. So good stuff, Judd. Good stuff there. Uh, if Thank you guys you. want here, old Macadac yeah. has a random Viking of the week. Oh, yeah. You want to get after it? Judd versus Declan here because uh, I lost last week. So losers out with the new rules. And uh, I finally got around to splitting up the statistics into all-time statistics and the new era where we all compete against each other. All right. So in the in the new era, Judd and I are tied with three victories. Declan has two. Declan, you can even it up here if you beat Judd in Random Viking of the Week today. Okay. Presented, presented by our friends at Livia, helping Purple Daily listeners get in the best shape of their life. I mean, look at that guy right there. That's a sports dad. You know what the difference in sports dad there is? Down 40 pounds. That's right. That's a couple of years ago now. A year plus uh, dropped 40 pounds thanks to a program that I'm going to tell you right now, a weight loss program that works. This isn't a quick fix diet. This is not a temporary solution. This is a program that's going to help you drop the weight and most importantly, keep the weight off. And right now, if you sign up, you are going to get three months free. That's right. Three months free. Imagine that. Call now. You're going to lose up to 10 pounds or more in the first two weeks. In the first two weeks. And we're talking three months free. We're talking three months ramp up time. You're going to look great. You're going to feel great. All those clothes that don't fit right now, guess what? They're going to fit. And then you're going to continue to lose the weight and keep it off. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia.com. L-I-V-E-A.com. Again, first three months free. Voted Minnesota's best weight loss program year after year. Livia.com. A shout out to to our friends at Summit Orthopedics. Whatever you may be dealing with pain wise, from the ankles all the way up to the neck, no referrals are needed to stop into Summit Orthopedics, one of the 25 locations in the Twin Cities and greater Minnesota. Same day appointments and they offer walk in urgent care seven days a week starting at 8 a.m. Learn more at summitortho.com. Summitortho.com. All right, boys, I have a series of clues. 
You guys get up to three incorrect guesses before you are eliminated. You can ask me questions if you want. I can refuse to answer because I am the sheriff of this game today. Losers out. Whoever loses gives the clues next week. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. This random Viking in his post career describes himself as a functional medical consultant actually went to school after his career was over to further his education to become a functional medical consultant in fact uh i found his website it's nutridin.com and uh, let's see here there's a picture of a kid in like a superhero suit the mission of their uh, business is to continue to guide us through all facets of uh, it's like x-ray equipment and I don't know. It's some weird, ambiguous nutrition and health company. Okay. Doesn't make sense to me, but it's a businessman. Okay. Also, according to this former Vikings LinkedIn page, which he does have a LinkedIn page. He also has a company called AFI Homes, which is a real estate investing company. So he's a very ambitious fellow. Yeah. Judd's got a smirk. Do you have a guess? No. No. You, you, uh, no. I. What I'm thinking is not. I'm not trying to mock. I'm just saying. What like, I'm thinking I, is not necessary. To, no, I'm not. I'm not laughing at what you're saying. I'm laughing at the job, at the businesses. Okay. You know, it's funny, like quick side street here. Former athletes, if you had a pie chart of what are they most likely to do after they're done playing their sport, if they want, if they still want to work, right? Financial advisor and real estate investor yeah. are like yeah. the two biggest chunks of pie, right? Sounds like Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you know how to make it work for everyone else, but sure. Digress. This random Viking of the week once intercepted a pass off Matt Hasselbeck. Should give you kind of an idea of generally Era. when this player played. This random Viking? Oh, where should I go here? Let's go there. Let's go here. 21 starts. 21 starts with the Minnesota Vikings in his Vikings career. Okay. But what the crazy thing is, so this random Viking had 21 starts with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. And that was part of his rookie contract or okay. his like entry contract. Okay. Did not sign a second contract in the NFL. So going from starting 21 times in your first go around to not signing a second contract done with football. <sighs> okay. I'm, I'm going to take a guess. Now, this name was mentioned earlier today and on one of our many shows when our mics were actually functional. Asher Allen? Wow, dude. Wow. Wow. Are you kidding me? Wow. He dude, I had mentioned contract. on this show. He was mentioned on this show. Because he retired. Did you have that? He did retire. Did, did you have Asher Allen queued up before I said the, 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 the memory? Uh, I forgot to queue up a random Viking, so I did it on the fly after you said his name. I had a feeling. I had a feeling when you were looking at your computer to get us information because you usually yes. don't. Oh, it's amazing. I had another clue that I thought would be great. He was a he's a cousin of Michael Irvin, the legendary Michael Irvin. You I didn't know, know that? that. That dude did not. Uh, that but but he was he was he was a very smart guy. But he definitely like knew the perils of the sport. I think he suffered a few concussions and said, "I'm he out of here," and yeah. I don't blame him. And he so was he's, once, a, he's a business man. He was once intimidated in the locker room at Winter Park by by Randy Moss in Moss 2.0 in a, what was a really weird scene. He, really? Um, yeah. So like, I, it, it was it was lunchtime during access, right? And Moss would stay at his locker during access. Not to talk to us, but to study, which I actually admired. And like he yeah. he yeah. would have his play cards and like uh, highlighters and stuff. And you know, a guy, a camera guy, I think, was working the room trying to get sound, trying to bring back. And uh, it was like Channel Four or something. Stop by Asher Allen's locker and and is like, hey, can I you know 
can you talk? He's like, absolutely, no problem. And so they, you know, turn towards the locker, sort of get the shot, right? Right. They get done. And Moss is like, don't ever have that camera turned towards me again to Asher Allen. He's like, don't oh. ever turn, don't ever turn towards me, man. Don't ever do that or something. Okay, guy. Really, really needs to calm down. It was calm really down. well, that was a that was a very um turbulent time. But nice guy, but yeah. Uh, Declan's so mad because you said his name early, right? You're the one that said his name. Sometimes Declan's mad about this and sometimes he's not. Declan's pissed right now. I'm pissed about this one. Yeah, that's really upsetting to me. I I thought I don't feel bad because you used Ramon Ortiz and I didn't have a chance to yesterday. So So congrats to Judd. Another victory. His uh, 56th all time victory in random Viking of the week here. And, uh, yeah, we're not going to do event line late tonight. We will do our live 10 o'clock a.m. Friday stream on the Purple Daily YouTube channel to recap what we saw. Vikings, Seahawks, preseason game number one. Thanks for hanging with us here. Purple Daily, daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.